Hey, what is going on, YouTube? Hey, Aaron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And guys, we've got a fun one for you in today's video. As promised, we are in the Z52 here, continuing Germany week with one of, if not the best destroyer pound for pound. The Z52 at legendary tier is just the jack of all trades, but a master of none. Her torpedoes are good. Her guns are good. Good sonar, good concealment. You get a Moderate duration smokescreen and, of course, an engine boost. She is not the most maneuverable, and she does lack in terms of, you know, I guess overall DPM. The guns aren't that fast firing. However, with quarter pen and the ferocious AP that she has, this ship is just truthfully one of my favorites and a top dog at legendary tier. Also found at legendary tier is uh, Random Islands. Who, uh, who put that there? And, of course, in addition to that... There is the blue teammates, which will always populate your team. How and why these guys got to legendary tier is a question that I would love to be answered. However, what I want you guys to do is guess the differential, whether it be a multiplier, one, two, three, four, five times the bottom score versus my score at the top here, or just an overall number of the score differential. That is a fun game that I might add into uh, my regular videos. Something I have also added to my regular videos now is showing the commander kind of beforehand as opposed to after and trying to put it into the video. And of course, for this game, we are running Eric Bay with Mordoff and Sims as inspiration. And guys, I'm going to be honest. My last two videos, I got a bunch of comments saying, well, actually, the best build is this and this and... I don't know if you guys don't watch the video or you listen to it on mute, but I specifically said for the previous videos that those builds may not be the absolute best. I am just trolling and trying to have fun. Now, of course, a few of those were just simply letting me know how they like to play, which is absolutely fine. But on a video where I specifically said I am just memeing for fun and I get somebody trying to coach a super unicum in this game, this is how I truthfully feel about it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> All jokes aside, guys, I understand that certain builds work better than others. There are certain ships, like my American Cruisers, where I will probably never change those builds. However, after 22, 23,000 battles, doing the same cookie cutter build and playing the exact same way every single game is tiresome, boring, and not truthfully that fun for you guys as the viewers. So my goal this week was to provide some new, fun, interesting, and entertaining content. Now, of course, that does not mean go out and just YOLO your ship away. We, and as we mentioned in the videos, we still played in a team-oriented fashion, trying to get objectives, trying to put our ship in the right spots. You can play for fun and play as a team player at the same time. And I think some people, when I do, like, instructional videos, they just, like, they take it so personally when it's like, Well, I play how I want! You can't tell me how to play! Well, when you have eight other teammates relying on you and you go out YOLO for your objectives, I think that is a very selfish way to play. Now, of course, you can still YOLO, have fun, and potentially get the cap or shoot a destroyer, what have you. But here's a situation where focus fire would have been really nice against this Z-46. The enemy threw a few salvos my way, and honestly, I tried to accelerate out of my smoke screen there, which is a touch of a mistake, but I did want to avoid the sonar from the Z-46. And here is just a good example of slight angle from this Z-46, but also a lack of fire from our teammates. I believe I saw one Salvo head his way, and he actually angled out, and we got a little bit lucky, unlucky rather, with RNG on the follow-up shots there. But he is now going to be able to survive and potentially reposition if he doesn't back into my sonar here. And that is when we notice this Schlieffen pushing our flank. We also have to watch out for his sonar. He does back into the sonar. There was actually a follow-up shot. However, again, my guns are turned, my turrets are turning, and RNG just says, nope. You saw those shells land on either side of his ships. And that is, I guess, one of the balancing equal factors of the German destroyers is your dispersion and grouping, even though it's on a destroyer, is lacking. However, you don't really notice it that much because of your pretty fast rate of fire. And here everyone is to bear witness of a Christmas miracle. Aaron gets a few consecutive torpedo hits. On torpedoes, he launched rather early into the game, but five hits there for about 50,000 damage off that Schlieffen. 
I could have stacked those torpedoes, however, I never think it's a good idea to stack torpedoes. Why? Because you decrease the surface area in which you can cover. Now, a YOLO rushing Schlieffen is one of those situations. Again, we probably could have dev struck him if all eight had connected, pending he did not saturate. But we really don't have time to think about that, as there is another battleship within our torpedo range, and we also have a Shimakaze right here in his smokescreen. Unfortunately, we are out of our sonar. And now is when you kind of notice that the team is really in some bad positions. We're not going to pay too much attention to them. We're just going to focus on playing your game and doing everything possible. Again, your objectives or your roles as a destroyer are to spot, to cap, and especially in a ship like the Z-52 here, is to eliminate other enemy destroyers. And that's exactly what we're doing. This enemy Shima gets a pretty good look, though. I think he was torping the battleships behind me, which is always something destroyer players need to be aware of. Are you behind a battleship and is there a destroyer in front of you? If so, I have eaten torpedoes once or twice that were meant for battleships and I can tell you it is one of the most frustrating things to occur in World of Warships Legends. Eating a torpedo as a destroyer player, it happens to all of us, it happens to the best of us as Aaron connects another good torpedo salvo there on that broadside. Yamato, I take a cheeky little blind fire here. I probably could have had the HE loaded. We take another one. We do connect one over pen and the damage output probably would have been the same. However, the potential for fire and incapacitation with the HE potentially outweighs the overall effectiveness of the AP in that situation. However, if you do catch a destroyer, even a cruiser, or even a battleship broadside at medium to close ranges with this AP, you should absolutely use it. It will chunk most destroyers, Kaba belts, cruiser belts, battleship superstructure for three and four thousand damage a piece every three and a half to four seconds there. It's kind of at this point in the game when everyone kind of looks up at the scoreboard and wonders, what the fuck happened? <laughs> I feel like we all feel that way every time we load up Legendary Tier, or even this game rather. Now, of course, there is still a chance, and we're going to try our asses off, as you should do in most games. However, after a certain point, I'm kind of just like, you know what? The game's over. Let's just have some fun, gain some damage in the meantime. So we're going to keep our torpedoes out of their tubes as soon as they're reloaded. We did manage to get a solo cap in the central, which is very, you know, on this particular map, it's pretty hard to retake this cap especially with a destroyer mid game so if we can get this potentially get another one get a few eliminations we could turn this game around it is looking very bleak however and the reason we kind of worked our way over to this cap is the kleber on the enemy team was wreaking havoc on our teammates in order to save those two battleships who have decided to kind of just sit there on charlie instead of gain any advantageous position we're going to go ahead and push up and try to help them as we all know, it is very frustrating when you are left alone to deal with a destroyer. And as you guys can see, there are the torpedoes from the Kleber. We're also paying attention to the other battleships. I know somebody had commented that I do spin my controller a lot. If you are not spinning your controller a lot, you're not paying attention to your situational awareness. Now, of course, I have my sensitivity set very high as we give the Columbo the coveted nice job as this GK turns broadside into a Conqueror. I know he was trying to dodge torpedoes, but again, just playing potentially a touch smarter or with the more situational awareness, as we were just talking about, is only going to help improve your gameplay. Situational awareness, out of everything in this game, and I am working on a top five tips or, you know, tips for newer players or whatever, out of everything in this game, situational awareness is number one. It's not how you aim, it's not your ship, it's not your build. Now, certainly those things can help, but at the end of the day, it's truthfully how much you're paying attention and putting your ship in the right spot. And speaking of the right spot, we've got a few torpedoes away on this main here. And we're also worried about the Kleber. And again, we actually do manage to get this Charlie cap. So that is two caps to their one. However, if you look at the point swing and the <laughs> insane ship imbalance, this game is, is all but over at this point. As we've mentioned before, these games are going to occur, but as long as you're learning from them, that is the true secret 
to Nirvana as a Legends player. And of course, guys, I did make some mistakes, potentially. I did not go after that Z46, potentially aggressive enough. But as we mentioned, we were trying to avoid his sonar. If I would have gotten him early on, we could have potentially changed the tide in this game. I don't think so. Again, judging the scores at the end of this one, um, if you haven't made your guesses down below, make sure to do so in the comments. We do actually connect a flood on that main there, as some torpedoes are zoned our way through that channel. It should, again... A great set of zoning torpedoes from that Shima or other destroyer. That is when we pop our sonar, trying to catch whatever destroyer is around this corner. And at this point, I am in the mood of, I'm going to try and YOLO as much damage as I can. That Kleber is right there, and he is on our sonar. However, he is behind that island. I do see some shells coming from this smokescreen here. That Musashi is not close enough, and I decide to just kind of put my ship at maximum risk, trying to eliminate these last two DDs in the center here. We Pretty much anything we're doing at this point is all but a futile effort. We're just trying to get a few cheeky eliminations, potentially a permanent flood. We do manage to catch this Shima on the edge of our sonar there. He's deciding to sit in his smoke. On top of that, we are also working our way into the cap with our smoke screen, and that is when we pick up the Z46. He is backing up there. We take a few salvos at him. We're trying to get the double strike. We get the first elimination on the Z46 there and a fire on that Shima and leave it to our last remaining teammate to finally take a shot at a destroyer to <laughs> eliminate our chances at a double strike. Hey, I'm never going to complain about a teammate shooting at DDs. I just wish it would have been about... 13 minutes sooner. No, I'm just kidding. There, the Musashi decides to take a shot at us, so we're going to go ahead and load up our HE as he put out our damage con from our torpedo hit. Nine total torpedo hits so far, 136,000 damage. Permanent Flood, we have been everywhere doing everything. Two solo caps, one elimination, one, you know, we got pretty much all of the health off of the other Z46, and we did manage to get that elimination. However, our team, like we mentioned, is just going to be choking down the 18.1 inches of Legendary tier, and there's nothing you can do about it. So accepting it, moving on, is just one of the keys of, like we mentioned, Nirvana. Achieving warships, achieving peace in World of Warships Legends is kind of my new goal. If I was on the red team at this point, I would just be like, all right, last remaining destroyer, just go ahead and shoot your guns. This game is over. However, we do have a good rack of torpedoes on that Schlieffen. He could potentially be out of a damage con. I guess that Musashi got his damage con back a lot faster than I thought as he already put out that fire. Three torpedo hits and a flood to kill the Schlieffen there, which also ticks us the high caliber. Three solo caps, two kills, 12 torpedo hits, a few floods, a few fires. And uh, yeah, 178,000 damage, which we actually managed to get a little bit more. I'm just going to go ahead and speed it up here because <laughs> the game is over. And there's actually kind of a funny meme moment towards the end of this. I'm definitely going to tell you guys that I meant to take this torpedo. However, I definitely just stopped and I was like, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and hit this thing after kind of realizing that I turned basically into it here. So a good LOL moment. Everyone make fun of me in the comments below. But was your final score predictions correct? A 24-32 for us in first place there, and a 252 <laughs> for Arshima, which I'm pretty sure took a random torp. And again, who takes random torps? No, I'm just kidding. I definitely did there. I would like to note that a few of my moves at the end there gained me a little bit of extra XP, despite the game being obviously over. And sometimes people will use XP like a, you know, a gotcha, told you so, if, you know, and you can certainly play the wrong way damage hunting and damage farming and get a decent XP total, which was detrimental to your team. However, on average, you can generally tell how well a player does by their average XP. And of course, the winning team does get a 1.5 time bonus, so that would have been a 3600 game on a win for us. But aiming for 1700, 1800 for tiers 6 through legendary tier is a good average XP total to aim for. 
If you're constantly scoring near a thousand, try to reevaluate your gameplay, see where you're making mistakes, and see how much better you can be doing by potentially helping your team with the objectives. One final thing I'd actually like to note here as we wrap up this Z52 video, if you actually look at the enemy XP totals, three of them were above 3k, so honestly it might not have mattered how much we did in this game, the enemy just, they had the moves this game, sometimes you just have to tip your cap and say GG's. But that is going to wrap it up for the Z52 here on Germany Week. We do have a Graf Spee video coming up. It is currently in the works. But I hope you guys enjoyed that one. A little bit different style, not quite the meme-worthy that you know Monday and Tuesday videos were. But anyway, love you guys. Have a great day. I'm out. Peace.